If you're into PC gaming, you've probably heard of the term XMP, but what does it mean? And more importantly, how does it affect that gaming performance? Let's find out in this video. But before I get into the video though, let me know, have you enabled XMP on your gaming PC? Comment down below. So let's start off with what XMP is. Extreme Memory Profile, or XMP for short, is technically a memory overclock. It's also sometimes called DOCP on some AMD Ryzen systems, particularly on Asus motherboards. But they both achieve the same goal, and that is to match the speeds which were advertised for your memory kit. So if you've got 3200 MHz CL16, this is your XMP profile. Not only does it raise the speeds to your specified speed on your memory kit, it also tightens the timings too. And this results in lower memory latency and in some cases, more gaming performance. This is why you should enable XMP. It's not on by default with most motherboards. And if you don't enable it, you will be stuck at your memory's default speed. So for DDR4, this is 2133 megahertz. And for DDR5, it's 4800 megahertz. So you're not going to be getting the speeds that you were advertised on your memory if you don't enable XMP or DOCP. And these days, the memory controllers on most CPUs should be able to handle most XMP profiles within reason. So you're basically going to be losing free performance if you don't enable it. And that is performance that you've paid for. For testing today, I'm using my Ryzen 5 5600G test bench with an MSI Gaming X GTX 1080. All testing is done at 1080p with no FSR being enabled in any of these games, so it is raw, straight up 1080p gaming performance. The specs of my test bench are a Ryzen 5 5600G, a GTX 1080 MSI Gaming X, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 dual channel memory running at both DDR4's base speed of 2133 megahertz and 3600 megahertz CL17. It also has a Sabre one terabyte NVMe Gen 3 SSD and an Asus Strix B550-F gaming. Starting off the testing today with Cinebench and the results here didn't really surprise me at all because when it comes to the single core performance, an uplift of around 4% is seen when enabling XMP, going up to 1433 from 1380. This is very minor and I'm surprised it's this small. Moving to the multi-core scores though, an uplift of 11% is seen here. This is about what I was expecting and this will translate to better performance when the CPU is being utilised more heavily, such as CPU intensive games and video editing. First game up today is Fortnite and on DirectX 12 with low settings, it sees a pretty big performance jump with XMP enabled, going from 194 FPS on average to 255. This is a massive jump and the game felt a lot smoother. The 1% lows were also more consistent too, jumping up to 132, so the game was a lot smoother with XMP enabled. So I would have to badge Fortnite as being a XMP necessity game. Atomic Heart is up next and here on the medium settings it sees a relatively small FPS jump going up to 116 FPS with XMP enabled. The 1% lows also jumped up to 92. So I'd have to say XMP isn't a massive performance giver here, but the extra performance is nice. Horizon Zero Dawn on the favor quality preset saw a very minor performance jump when it went to XMP, jumping up to 95 FPS on average from 92 FPS when XMP was off. The 1% low also went up by 5 FPS, so the game was technically running better on XMP, but we were GPU bound here, so we didn't see that much of a performance increase. F122 is an example of a very GPU dependent game, and here on the high settings, we got 128 FPS on average with XMP on. This was up from 124 FPS with XMP off, so not a massive performance uplift here either. However, the 1% low frame rate did go up by 10 frames, going up from 74 FPS to 84, so the game was slightly smoother I guess, but it's definitely not make or break. Rainbow Six Siege on the high preset saw a relatively beefy jump, going up to 287 FPS on average when XMP was enabled. However, even if you've got a 240Hz monitor, you won't see the difference, 
but one thing you might see the difference is the jump of 30 fps with the one percent lows it went from 158 to 188 and this translates to a much smoother gameplay experience Forza Horizon 5 on the high preset didn't care whether XMP was enabled or disabled, only going up by 3 FPS for both the average and the 1% low, so yeah XMP doesn't matter here at all really if I'm honest, so if you don't have XMP RAM and you want to play Forza Horizon 5 and your GPU bound, I don't see that it would be an issue. Cyberpunk is a game that surprised me because I thought Cyberpunk was pretty memory and CPU intensive but it turns out it isn't especially when you've got a Pascal GPU because I've always said Cyberpunk just hates Pascal for some reason I don't know why but both the 1% low and the average jumped up by only 1 FPS here when XMP was enabled so it doesn't matter whether you've got XMP RAM or not when you're playing Cyberpunk on a similar configuration to this. GTA 5 on this configuration with the very high preset with 2 times MSAA really does like XMP. This is because it jumped up by a substantial, in my opinion, 20 FPS when XMP was enabled for the average FPS and it jumped up by 12 FPS for the 1% low when XMP was enabled. Judging from previous tests that I've done over the years, GTA 5 does seem a bit more CPU intensive than GPU intensive, so this is probably why XMP has quite a big lead over non-XMP values here. Last game up is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Here I set it to the basic preset with high textures as the 8GB of VRAM is more than enough for that. And yet again we see a very minor FPS increase with XMP being enabled for both the 1% low and the average. Yet again Modern Warfare 2 is that game that doesn't really care if you've got XMP enabled or disabled. Looking at the 9 game average taken from the 9 games tested today and we see a 12% performance uplift on average. This performance uplift does vary by game but 12% overall is relatively minor but it is a welcome upgrade of course. Looking at the 1% low figures now and we observe a 13% uplift and this translates to a smoother gaming experience as there's less jitters and hitching in your gameplay. Which is always a nice to have because I tell you one thing. I don't like stuttery gameplay. Overall, I'm surprised that XMP didn't make that big of a difference, especially as this is a Ryzen system and Ryzen is very prone to memory latency thanks to their chiplet design. Judging by the performance though, XMP made more of a difference in games where it was more CPU bound. This is because in games like Rainbow Six Siege, the GTX 1080 was pushing a lot of frame rate and the 5600G did have a hard time keeping up. And this is where we did see quite a bit of a difference with XMP enabled versus being off. The same is also true here for Fortnite as well because Fortnite is actually a pretty CPU intensive game. So this leads me to believe you will see a much bigger performance advantage when you're using the CPU a lot more than your GPU. So if you're using applications like Adobe Premiere Pro for instance and in games where you're more CPU bound, XMP is going to make a bigger difference here. But if you're GPU bound most of the time, I don't think you're going to see the difference between XMP enabled and disabled. Maybe the 1% lows might be a bit better with XMP enabled, but at this point you've got to look at both running side by side and I don't think you'll notice a difference. So high speed memory and XMP profiles do certainly help out in some gaming scenarios, but not all of them. And this is why I think majorly high speed memory is not very good at all because it's just literally a waste of money. It's a lot more expensive and you don't really get that much more performance for it. This is why I'd recommend if you've got DDR4, get something that is 3600 MHz, CL16 or CL17 or something that's even 3200 MHz CL16. It's a great value memory kit and you can pick one up for about 40 quid here in the UK. I don't think they even cost that much anymore. And if you're on DDR5, get something that is CL30, 6000 MHz. This is quite a good sweet spot for AMD systems. Maybe get something that's a slightly higher clocked if you're on an Intel system. So the takeaway from this video is just enable XMP. You've paid for the extra performance from your memory, so you may as well turn on a setting which allows you to run your memory at them speeds. Because at the end of the day, 
you spent your hard earned cash on it. So with these tips and that being said, I'm going to leave the video here. If you like this one, like it, stay subscribed for more tech content and I'll catch you in the next one.